If you've been reading Afrocentric blogs and YouTube channels, you've undoubtedly seen these videos of African leaders rebuking Western leaders. When the French president attempted to lie in front of journalists, the Congolese president was stopped by him. And in the case of the president of Namibia, who also expelled that senior German diplomat. As a result, more and more African leaders are now speaking out against Western lies and against the Western narrative, even going so far as to criticize the Western policies that are being pushed on them. And when I say that, I'm referring to people like Paul Kagamer, the late president of Tanzania, William Ruto, the president of Kenya right now, and Museveni, the president of Uganda. I'm referring to the president of Namibia. I'm referring to Felix Chisikedi, the president of the Congo. I'm referring to South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, as well as some opposition leaders like Julius Malema. So, in a sense, Muammar Gaddafi and some of these presidents are comparable. I'd like to present a few video of African leaders rejecting or generally speaking up against Western lies. I'll then go into why I believe that today's African leaders are becoming more confident in speaking up. They are courageously and fearlessly speaking up in public without holding back. Here, for example, the number of Chinese people living here in the meantime is four times as much as, for example, the German uh, community. And so far, it's not precisely the same what takes place all over the world. There are differences. And what I'm... Mr. Speaker, yeah. what is your problem with that? Why does it become your problem? <laughs> it, looks, it looks like it's a more European problem than our problem. Yeah. You are so sorry for us. <laughs> I don't see... Chinese will never come and play around here. As Germans don't be allowed to do that. Which Germans are doing, by the way. You talk about Chinese, we allow Germans to come off our visas here. Red carpet. Our people are harassed in Germany. Even diplomatic passport holders. In Germany. They are not your puppet. So why Chinese talk about Germans? How we are treating us there? Chinese don't treat us like that. Yes. Do you think aligning yourself with Vladimir Putin is going to be good for South Africa? But that's what it is now. South Africa is in alliance with Russia, with India, uh, with Brazil, with China. So why are you asking me as if it's a, some policy that is going to be implemented right after now. I took over? South Africa is in alliance with Russia now. South Africa right now calls itself non-aligned. In the context of the war, but these are two different things. South Africa is an ally of Russia. Now, the second question is, where does South Africa stand on the war? It says I'm a non-aligned in relation to war, but Russia remains South Africa's friend. So we cannot create confusion around there. Don't create an impression that it is Malema who's going to come and create an alliance with Russia. But there are some very specific Actually, I will, if, if go, I may I will say go so. beyond that. I will go beyond the, the friendship with Russia, and in the war, I will align with Russia, and I will even supply the weapons to Russia. Because Russia is in a war with, un, with imperialism, and any agenda that seeks to push back uh, imperialist agendas, it's well within the policies of the EFF. This notion of international rules is very comfortable for some people to use when it suits them, but they don't believe in international rules when it doesn't suit them because they don't apply international rules or law equally in all circumstances. So you can't say because Ukraine has been invaded uh, that suddenly sovereignty is important, but it was never important for Palestine. Mm -hmm. It's very peculiar. Mm -hmm. If you believe in international law truly, Mm -hmm. then wherever sovereignty is infringed, it must apply. Mm -hmm. And this is the point we've been making, that we use the framework of international law unequally, depending on who is affected. And we are arguing that that must change. And one of the interesting changes that has occurred is the sudden movement, because Russia has invaded Ukraine, that we say, OK, let's not allow the Security Council to just have the veto and let it pass, we take it to the General Assembly. When some of us had been calling for the General Assembly to have a greater say, we never enjoyed support, but suddenly today, see, that's where international law begins to mean nothing. 
Because, as you have said, if we, didn't, if we don't respect ourselves, nobody is going to respect us. <laughs> you know? We have been to US Africa. We have been to uh, some other engagement with other countries. Now we have been invited for a uh, Russia-Africa summit. We have made a decision, very respectfully, as heads of state in Africa, that any engagement with other partners must be an engagement of equals. And for it to be meaningful, for it to be meaningful, if we are going to meet the president of a country, we have organized ourselves that the Troika is going to represent Africa. The chair, the current chair, the past chair, the chair that is coming, and the heads of our uh, regional economic uh, commissions, about six, seven people. But what happens continuously? When others want to engage with us, they don't want to deal with the Troika. They want to invite 50 heads of state. <laughs> so we go to a meeting, just explain to me what kind of outcome you expect where 50 heads of state are sitting. Everybody is asked to speak to one and a half minutes. You speak to one, for one and a half minutes. What kind of engagement are you going to get? You're going to get nothing. Right? The best that you get is photographs. <laughs> now, why are more African politicians speaking out now? Why are they becoming so courageous in speaking out? Multipolarism is one solution. We must first acknowledge that for a very long time, Africa has been poor, has been made fun of, and has always been the new kid on the block that everyone makes fun of, despite the fact that Africa has resources, minerals, and other natural resources that other continents lack. China is a part of multipolarism, therefore. China arrived in Africa and began providing some African nations with loans for development, grants, and foreign aid, to the point where some African nations no longer believe they require the West, because it has consistently happened for a very long time that strong men and dictators in Africa hold on to their positions of authority for more than 40 years because they are friendly with or buddies with Western nations. They only had to refrain from interfering with or disturbing the activity of those Western nations in their own nation. You basically stay in power forever if you let them invade, exploit, and steal your minerals. And Cameroon is a strong argument. Paul Bia has been in power there for more than 43 years. The man is 89 years old and occasionally seems to forget that elections are taking place in that nation because according to what I've read, he resides or stays in Switzerland in a castle he purchased and controls over via Skype. You can research it. And because France and other nations defend him, he has never been forced out of office. There was a period when Cameroon nearly experienced a coup, and some French intervened to put an end to it, since they didn't want to lose that leader and replace him with a conscious person. So it has always been the case. However, multipolarism in a few other democratic nations means that the new leaders no longer require the West— they look to China, and as a result, they may now openly express themselves. So, is that the key reason? Multipolarism. There are still additional factors, such as the need for free media, as world news was formerly mostly under the authority of Western media. It was BBC. We had BBC in Swahili, Lingala, Kinyarwanda, Luganda, and Kirundi, among many other African languages. The voice of America, or VOA, is still available in the same languages. The bogus news from the West was sent to Africa through local language translations of Western media. Because of the intended audience, the news used to be changed. Even Somali and Amharic have them. There is a Somali VOA. Can you believe BBC Somali exists? Today, we have free media like YouTube and blogs, and individual nations are also acquiring their own digital TVs to ensure that their citizens have access to relevant information. Nevertheless, multipolarism is a major trend that is being fanned by events in Russia, which have caused China to collaborate with nations like Brazil, South Africa, Iran, 
India, and to Saudi Arabia. Due to the fact that they can still obtain what they require from the East, African leaders and nations have realized that they may not actually need the West. It is available in China. They can purchase the oil from Saudi Arabia and make their payment in Chinese yuan. They don't require the money. That is why they are speaking out and even suggesting that while trading in Africa, they should stop using dollars. That's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. I'm going to get out of here now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.